We'd like to welcome you today to the celebration of the life of Judith Astwood. We're going to be singing some songs that were favourites of hers and of Steve's, and we're going to be reading some verses from the Bible. The family will also be bringing tributes, and today we really believe that this is going to be a helpful moment to remember Judith, but also to be thankful for her life and for where she is now. of being the pastors in the location of a life that the Astwood family worship in. We're so sorry that we can't meet with you in person today. 
It was a delight and honour to know Judith as a co-worker and a friend. She was a precious member of our church family. Judith brought such a deep care and connection with others and her impact on our lives and the lives of so many others just simply cannot be overstated. Everywhere Judith went, she made an impact. Judith's fantastic. She's just incredible and wonderful would be the stories over and over again, both in the church and through her work in education. We love the way Judith took her work and her calling really seriously to make safe spaces for children to, to grow and flourish. She was a real example and she clearly got a lot of joy from her vocation and her connection with the people that she served. Judith engaged with people in a very special way that made them know that they were loved and known. It was incredible every single time. And we'd often find her in deep conversation with someone, often with her arm around them, encouraging them and blessing them. She sought people out. She showed such compassion and care, and she showed amazing attention to detail in people's lives. She remembered names, details, and specifics of what was going on. We loved hearing Judith's stories of deep faith and commitment to Jesus. With exuberance, she would tell of his great faithfulness to her, her family and through her whole life. From Ghana to the UK, she knew God's presence and power. We will miss her greatly, and we're praying for Steve and all the family today, and in the weeks and the months to come. God bless you all. And now I'd love to read some tributes from members of the family. Firstly, from Phil and Lois. It seems that Jew has always been a part of our family and our lives. From the time she came back to the UK from Ghana, both her family and ours have shared life together. Her strength, resilience, and willingness to walk the path she was on, however hard, has always been who she was. Meeting Steve and falling in love was a challenge, not because he was hard to love, but rather hard to leave as she lived for those first two years in Essex and only got to be with him during the school holidays. As always, she got on with it with grace, warmth and patience. Wherever Jew was, she surrounded herself with others as well as her family, giving of herself, loving and including everyone she met. We proudly watched her grow, working hard, yet loving every moment and always having time for others. We will never forget when six years ago we met with Jew and Steve to discuss the possibility of Phil and I joining them to fully share life together. Jew preempted any discussion and simply said, do you want to come and live with us? Because we would want you to. And that was the end of the discussion. She, along with Steve and the boys, welcomed us with warmth, love and acceptance as part of the family unit. And we've been so blessed and privileged to share life together for the past six years. We've been so proud as we have watched you, with Steve at her side, set such an example, particularly over the past weeks, as she lived her strong faith, never faltering in her love for Christ and her trust in him. Our lives have been so enriched by her life and we truly thank God for every remembrance of her. We can and will never forget you, Jew. Such a wonderful, loving and vibrant part of our lives. We will keep your memory alive and look after your precious family as much and for as long as we are able. We miss you and we love you so much. And now some tributes from Judith's siblings. Judith was our family historian. We used to joke with her about just how much she could remember and whether it predated her birth. If there was ever a question about something that happened in the past, the usual and often heard statement was, we'll ask you. She had a keen and unusual interest in the detail of people's lives. She always enjoyed conversation and was a brilliant host, infusing everything she did with warmth and love. People, and in particular family, were what got her going. They caused her to talk with real passion and fascination. She delighted in trying to spark the same interest in whoever she was talking to. Her passion came from deep within her. It was simply who she was. She loved her family, 
her upbringing in Ghana, and had the most profound love and pride in her mum and dad. All they were and all they stood for. You only had to spend a few minutes in conversation with Ju about her parents to be left in no doubt that they were everything to her. She was so rooted in all that life in Ghana meant. Her love for her sisters and brother is reflected in the grief they all share and carry individually. She was fiercely protective of and unfailingly loyal to them all. If we could include all the stories that bring back so many wonderful memories, then we could fill more than a book. The story of her baptism in the filthy river, risking cholera and typhoid during an evangelistic campaign, or when she picked up a rope in the garage whilst playing cops and robbers, only to find out that it was a snake. Of her fascination with snickerdoodles and brandy snaps and her love for baking and her creativity just singing together and hearing her beautiful voice. For Ruth, Erica, Margie, Mark and Elizabeth, Judith's passing leaves a pain that may ease but will never leave. She is quite simply irreplaceable. Whenever we try to describe our family, it's usually preceded by the phrase, it's a bit unusual, but she absolutely loved that. Four brothers in Ghana, Emmanuel, Ben, Johnny and Robert have lost their little sister and they grieve with us today. Add to that the Nati family who have lost one of their own. She has nephews and nieces who have been touched by a special gift, someone called Auntie Jew, who always had time for them, who was always interested, always had a story to tell and would always cheer them on as if they were the only one. Then of course, there are her three boys, as she called them, Steve, Simeon and Ben. She met Steve almost as soon as she arrived from Ghana 35 years ago, and they've been in love since then. The family they built together has seen Simeon and Ben grow into fine young men. And though the pain is great, they are her legacy and they'll do her proud. There was no limit to the size of her heart and that is reflected in the tributes of colleagues, students and friends. What made her all that she was? It was her greatest love. When she was ill, one day she simply said, I love Jesus and I've loved him since I was four years old. To understand you, you had to understand her faith. She lived for an audience of one and that devotion overflowed to make her all that she was to so many. There were times when she may not have appreciated just how much she was loved. But anyone who knew her cannot be surprised by all that has been said and shared since she left us. A life well lived. And as a family, we salute her. We honor her and want the world to know just how much we loved her. The greatest joy, we will see her again and share the joy with everyone she used to tell us about. Judith, may you rest in peace and rise in glory.
Let your love rise above every fear Like the sun shaping the shadows In my weakness your glory appear I see that I'm not enough I'm not enough Unless you come Simeon and Ben have uh, written their tributes and uh, I'm going to deliver them now. Simeon says, I will remember the many moments when I needed you in my tough times and I always knew that wherever I was, you would always come to find me and help me. I will never forget those moments when you loved, supported and comforted me. Those times tell me that you are an awesome, cool and strong person. I also remember the great times we spent when we worked on the family tree or watched movies together. And I'll never forget the laughs and teasing and jokes we shared with each other. Mum, I love you and I'll never forget you. I'm gonna miss you a lot. Thank you for being the very best mum to me. And Ben wrote these words. He said, I'm fiercely proud to call Judith my mum. I've been told for as long as I can remember that I look like her. It probably has something to do with the big brown eyes we share. It was a comment I never knew how to respond to, but as I've grown older, it's become one of my favorite compliments. Growing up, we would joke about how we were twins, triplets if you include her mom. In every way, I wanted to be more and more like her. She was kind and she knew how to connect with people. She could cue into a person's feelings and had a wisdom about her that made you lean into whatever she said. Her emotions were infectious. I can't think of a single time where seeing her smile wouldn't spread throughout an entire room. 
The thing that I will miss the most is hearing her tell stories. She would tell me about stories from Ghana, where she grew up. Her memory was incredible, which made getting out of trouble quite difficult. We'd spoken about planning a trip to Ghana and I looked forward to seeing where these stories had happened. Over the last month, my dad started affectionately calling Judith Princess. There isn't a name more accurate to describe her. She isn't the typical damsel in distress you associate with the name, but she is the daughter of the highest king. Mum, you will be missed more than I can express with words. Try not to have too much fun in heaven without us. To borrow the words of one of my favourite songs, Judith was my sweetest downfall. From the first time I saw her through the window of our family home, I was hooked. I often told her it was the way she fluttered those big brown eyes at me, although she would always insist that she was only blinking. The month was August and the year was 1984, and our two families were about to spend a week together at a Christian festival. She was my first kiss and became my lifelong obsession. Although she did like to string me along a little and keep me humble, when someone inquired at the aforementioned festival if we were now going out, she replied, I don't know, he hasn't asked me yet. Now my inexperience in matters of the heart had assumed that a kiss and the holding of hands indicated that we were. So feeling a little flustered, I asked her and she informed me that she'd like to think about it. And so began a holiday romance that lasted a lifetime. This year marked our 30th wedding anniversary. And so I think I'm well positioned to say, Judith was ace. It was a total honor to share life with her and she made me proud on a daily basis. She was able to see the gold in people and more importantly, tease it out, bring it to the surface, convince people of their worth and cause them to believe in themselves and strive for the best. Montague School, where both Judith and I were privileged to work for many years, had as its strapline, striving for excellence, broadening horizons. It was often said that if you cut Judith open, she would have the values of Montague running through her like a stick of seaside rock. And this never left her. She loved hearing about the successes of former pupils and was fiercely proud of all they achieved. And it's clear from the countless messages we've received from many people that she was deeply loved and respected. Some of the messages have come from people whose names I had completely forgotten. But believe me, she never forgot a single one of them. Judith taught us how to notice people, how to love, how to make people feel valued and honor them. Sometimes she would approach people randomly on the street because she remembered them from years ago and wanted to catch up with their news. I also remember touring a historic house once when she stopped in her tracks to speak to two men who were busy sweeping the floors. She had a suspicion that they were Ghanaian and so, as you do, she greeted them in Chui. The hunch paid off and five minutes later they were hugging like long lost friends. Jesus said, you've been treated generously, so live generously. This love of God is what fueled her life. Her heart of love for those around her was an overflow of the deep love she has for Jesus. We deliberately spent the last six weeks since receiving the diagnosis, cultivating the presence of God in our home, praying, worshiping, and taking communion daily. They were beautiful and profound moments of peace in the midst of a serious storm. We both remained fully committed in our faith that God would heal her. And I chuckle now that no one would have been more surprised than Judith when she woke on Wednesday morning to find herself in the presence of Jesus. While the rest of us were hugging and crying and sharing our grief in those first few hours, Judith was at last enjoying the fullness of life for which we are all created. As Elizabeth, Judith's sister, put it, she received a better offer, and it was one she couldn't turn down. A friend who visited us the previous week reminded us that when the children of God approach his throne, angels have to get out of the way. You see, 
Heaven hasn't gained another angel. No, we are much more than that. I've amused myself with a picture of her striding into the throne room, angels scattering as she climbs onto God's knee. It's what she always looked forward to doing. Today, Judith is truly home, and one day we will be also. Today, we want to honor and give thanks for the life and ministry of Judith Astwood. I will love and our prayers are particularly with the family, with Steve, Benjamin, Simeon, Phil and Lois, who have been a treasured part of our church here at Alive. This is a very difficult time, of course, for the family and particularly because of the restrictions that have been caused by the coronavirus epidemic. One of the hardest things to face when people have endured sickness and pain in their last days is what we remember. God has gifted us with memories and no doubt photo albums are going to be opened and stories told uh, recording treasured moments of the past. However, thoughts tend to drift towards the last days when pain and suffering were the focus. Looking back and remembering is going to prove to be a very special gift from God in the days ahead. But the wonderful thing that we can do as Christians is look to the future hope. Quoting from the book of Isaiah, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Nobody really knows how magnificent the afterlife really is. We believe today that Judith is right now in the presence of Jesus and is covered and held in the love of her heavenly Father. And the Apostle Paul makes this very clear in the Bible. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21 says this, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. In verse 23 he says, I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. You'll notice in those two verses, one talks about gain and the other better by far. To look forward when we will be reunited with loved ones should be strongly in our thoughts. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. So where is this? Where is God's throne? Where is Christ seated? Well, of course, this is a picture of God's home, heaven. And the Bible tells us, keep thinking about heaven. I think it's a great thing to imagine our future lives. Judith, together with all Christians, has an amazing and awesome future. She has actually now entered into a totally new dimension of life. Let's just look at three things that are promised. Firstly, a new location. She has a place prepared by Jesus in God's home, heaven. Secondly, a new intimacy. Right now, Judith has intimacy with God that is far richer and more wonderful than anything found on this earth. A new location, a new intimacy. But thirdly, and this is good news for all of us, a new body is promised. Look at this word from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which I think is so helpful. It is this passage that gives incredible comfort when we have memories that linger with regard to witnessing suffering and pain of loved ones, because we are actually promised resurrection bodies. Let's read the verse together. Verse 42 uh, in 1 Corinthians 15 says this, So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. 
It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Often we think, as death approaches, of perishable things, of dishonor, of weakness. And yet we are told in this verse that the resurrection body is the total opposite of that which is natural, and we are granted a supernatural body. And I, I guess the best way we can think of that is that Jesus was the first to be raised from the dead, and he was recognized. It was a real body, but it was a body that had no limitations and was a spiritual body also. And so it's a privilege to be able to say that together we are thanking God for his kindness uh, in allowing Judith to be a part of our lives. Uh, as part of a life's leadership, I want to say what a privilege it has been to have uh, Steve and Judith with us in the church here. And so it is with gratitude that we honour this wonderful woman. Thank you. We'd like to take a few moments now just to pray for the family. So let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that you're always with us and for us. And we speak your presence and your blessing upon the family today. Jesus, you said in your um, Sermon on the Mount, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And we speak the comfort of God mm. upon us all, the family and friends today. And we pray that we would know your presence and goodness all around us. God, we speak comfort into our hearts. We pray in this moment that as we remember and as we grieve well, we would encounter you yeah. in the process of doing so. We pray, God, that we would be united and connected together as friends and family. And as we grieve together, as we remember well, that we would know your presence. And mm -hmm. so, God, we pray in the name of Jesus that we would know you with us today. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining with us today. We believe this has been a day that's honoured Judith and has been a celebration of a life well lived. Thank you.